Hello, everyone, and welcome back to MBH Corp's channel. So last video, we dove deeper into Callum's background and how he got involved, his past experiences, and what makes him an entrepreneur in spirit. But today, we wanted to dive deeper into the company with Callum. So first off, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, Michael. It's good to be back. Um, so first, let's break MBH down for people, for your, for your common investor or your, your common watcher. So you are a global agglomerate introducing capital to well-established, profitable small businesses. What Can you explain this in more layman terms? Yeah, so an, an agglomerate is a grouping of, of like-minded companies. Um, and what we're very focused on is a very neglected part of the market, which is good, well-run, profitable small businesses. So most of the companies that we uh, acquire that come into the group are, I think on average, the, the average age is around 23 years of the, of the companies. The founders are in their 40s and 50s. Um, and these are these are well-established, profitable companies, but typically they're too small to go public themselves, and they're too small for private equity. Although we we like to say they're also too smart for private equity. The you know the, the idea of selling their business to uh, private equity, getting saddled with debt, um, and losing control of the company doesn't appeal. And for for entrepreneurs, keeping control is, is a very important thing. So mm -hmm. we've created this holding company for small business owners that want to go public, but without the challenges, uh, and they want to keep control over their business. So it's their brand, it's their hiring and firing, it's their culture. Um, and that allows us, because that's so appealing to small business owners, that allows us to do a lot of deals. So we get about a thousand applications a year from companies that want to join us. Now, some are too early stage and, and some of the founders are looking for an exit, so they're not right for us. But we, we whittle it down to, we take about 40 to 50 a year through due diligence and, and whittle that down to about 10 to 20 a year that we bring into the group. Um, so it, it clearly appeals to small business owners, but I think it offers a really unique opportunity for investors. So um, the, the interesting thing about small business is that one deal can double or triple the profits of a small business for a year. That's, that's mm -hmm. the nice thing about these small businesses. And yet, if you're an investor, there is no methodology, there is no product to get into small business investing. It's, it's incredibly illiquid. If you've ever made the mistake, as I have, of investing in your friend's company, you know, they always promise you you'll get your money out in three to five years, but um, yeah, decades <laughs> later, we're still having the conversation. Mm -hmm. So this provides liquidity. And, and basically, what we're saying to investors is, look, there's three main drivers of value that, that we create at MBH Corporation. So the first is these acquisitions and we only ever do earnings per share accretive acquisitions that means we'll only buy companies at a lower mar multiple than the multiple that we're trading at so mm -hmm. so the earnings per share goes up with every acquisition that we do and that's the biggest driver of value um, the second driver of value is the organic growth so these are these are often quite stable companies um, but interestingly, as soon as they get into a PLC environment, they're able to win much bigger contracts. They, you know, they get past those procurement hurdles that, that often constrain small business. Um, and then the third one is synergies. And although these companies are from different countries and different industries, it's amazing how many opportunities there are to cross-share best practice, to share contacts. And, and of course, they all have a vested interest in each other's success. So um, it's a very collaborative environment. And uh, yeah, there, there is no stronger force than, than a group of well-motivated small business owners all striving for the same thing. Yeah, it is really interesting. You guys have found a way to make investing in small businesses liquid. Um, an interesting uh, question I have here is, is there any specific industries you guys target more than others? Or does it really just come down to how well the fundamentals are laid out throughout the business? No, so we're, we're industry agnostic, but people have, have misinterpreted that to mean that we're not focused. And, and actually, we're incredibly focused, but on a narrow band at the top of small business across multiple industries. So typically the companies we're looking to bring into the group are doing between a million and 10 million US in EBIT. That's kind of our, our sweet spot. Um, and actually that's already kind of the top 1% of small businesses across multiple industries. Um, what does tend to happen is every time we bring 
a new company in that starts a new vertical. So if, if we have a construction company joins us tomorrow, it joins the construction vertical. If we had a um, technology company, it might start its own technology company vertical. And of course, whenever we do that, we suddenly get inundated by new companies in, in those verticals. So you can see, if you look at our family portrait of, of the, the companies in the group, we started with construction and education and the bulk of the companies is in there. Um, but we've just recently added in, in the US, we just recently added Boulder Sausage, which is a food, it started the food and beverage vertical and already getting lots and lots of companies in the food and beverage space that want to join us. So uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty open. Okay, yeah, that does make sense though, that the more you get of one thing, the more you're gonna get of that of that vertical. Exactly, so, social proof, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, do you guys have any competitors in, in this space at all? And what sets MBH apart from your competitors? So all of the elements of what we're doing have been done many times before. There are, there are plenty of public companies that acquire companies that, at a lower valuation. Um, if you look at, at Berkshire Hathaway, for example, it, it's changed in recent years as they've become too big, but 30, 40 years ago, if you were a family owned business, you wanted to be owned by Warren because you knew that he would leave you alone to, to keep doing it as opposed to private equity that will try and streamline you and make you more efficient. So um, lots of people have done elements of this. I think we're the first people that have done it in the small business space and putting the entrepreneur first. It's kind of a bottom up uh, approach. Um, now that doesn't mean we don't have competition uh, uh you know there's, there's a lot of options out there and and an increasing amount of of options um for small businesses which is which is a good thing but um i think as we with every company that we add our model becomes stronger and the um knowledge base and the resources in the group becomes stronger and it becomes more appealing so hopefully we'll build a bit of bit of a moat by that head start all right callum can you tell me more about the mbh bond you guys recently put out yeah, so th this was a, an innovation that um, we introduced about uh, I guess a year ago, coming up to a year ago now. So typically when we brought companies into the group, we don't use cash. Um, so we would typically do a share swap. So the small business owner swaps their private stock for our public stock. Um, however, as I mentioned earlier, we only ever do earnings per share accretive deals. Now, the problem with that is the share price can fluctuate, obviously, and, and we didn't want to put our acquisitions on hold just because of a low share price. So we introduced this bond. Now, typically, when companies have a bond, they sell it and they use the cash to do the acquisitions. We, we kind of cut out the middleman and we just use the bond. And actually, that's, that's very appealing. Some of the companies where the founders join us, especially if they're, they're a little bit um, more mature, they they might want the stability of a bond versus the volatility of a of a stock so um yeah it just allows us to keep doing deals and means that we don't need to be distracted by the share price we just focus on bringing in these good profitable cash generating small businesses every month wonderful i never thought about that the idea that you could you could trade in for a stock or a bond that, that's cool um is there anything yeah. else about the company you'd like to squeeze in uh, not really. I mean, it's it's we we are as transparent as we can possibly be. So on this YouTube channel, once a quarter, we bring all of the principles together on a webinar where they answer questions from investors. Um, there's a lot of uh, and anyone that sends an investor question to us, I try and do a video within a week and, and put that out. Um, but really, it's just it's a fun company i mean it's a fun company to be involved in but i also think it's a fun company to watch because it's you know pretty much a, uh we, we make an announcement every single month of of great companies that are joining so um yeah I, we we love having um investors along that have, have taken the time to look into us and and like that small business space Wonderful. Well, Callum, thank you again. And thanks everyone for watching. Uh, don't be afraid to like, subscribe, hit the other social platforms for us, join the conversation. Callum, have a wonderful day. Thanks, Mike.